Hey, sorry I'm late, everybody. You know, I had to get some coffee, and you know, the coffee here is not very good. What time's lunch today, anyway? Are we gonna wrap at a decent time? I mean, I wanna be here all night. I got some things to do tonight. Here's 10 easy ways to get yourself fired when you're on set. You're fired. Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slab Lens, I'm going to talk about the 10 easiest ways to get fired when you're working on set. Number one, don't show up on time. Are you kidding me? Everyone knows what time you have to be there. Plan accordingly. Get yourself to the set on time. If you're not showing up on time, you're probably going to be fired, or at least not invited back. Number two, just show up on set and don't have a single thing with you. Just you, ready to have everyone else take care of you. Give you some tools you might need. Give you some gloves you might need. Give you anything you might need. Just show up in the morning and walk around with your coffee in your hand for the first hour. Because everyone knows that a one-handed person works just as fast as a two-handed person. But if you want to show up with a little kit that has a pen and a multi-tool and a pair of gloves and it looks like you're actually ready to come to work, you're probably not going to be fired when you're on set. If you've got a great idea on how the shot should go down or what should be happening, you should tell the director and you should mention it to the producer and you should make sure that everyone understands your great ideas because obviously you know how it should be done. That's a great way to be fired. It is really a breach of etiquette for someone on set to start telling the director or mentioning the director they ought to do this or they ought to do that or to be saying, well, gee, after a while, it's like how many personalities do we have on set? How many people are going to be driving this truck? Be a good soldier, support the process and get in there and make it happen. I was on set once and a person walked in to a shot. It looked kind of compromising the way the woman walked into the shot. And one of the PAs laughed, oh, that's never going to work. And at that moment, the client came running out of the other room. The director looked at me, looked at the PA. Now there's a big fight between the director and the, the client. And I'm going to the PA, who are you to say that's not going to work? You know, it's like, he created an issue on set that created a bad relationship between my, my director and the, and the client, which is really unfortunate. Number four, the person who hired you obviously wants you to sit on your phone and text and chat and do all those uh, kind of funny things, all the cat videos you missed in the last week. They want you to do that during the workday. They want you to be on your phone and checking things out, and that's pretty much a great way to be fired. The proper way to be on set is that the phone is never seen and that you're there to work. And when you have breaks or it's lunchtime, you check your emails and you do your things you need to then, but the rest of the time, you're there to work. Number five, just stand off in the corner and chat with the people who are over at craft services or the other heads of the departments or the other people you're working with or the bride or the groom or whoever. Perhaps a better way to do it is if you're on set, you stand close to your department head or close to your photographer at a wedding shoot or close to the person who's kind of in charge, not right on top of them because no one wants you to stand there with your nose in their face, but close by so when they say, gee, we really need an apple box here. You can go, coming in, I've got an apple box. Now all of a sudden you're a useful member of the crew. You're doing things that are, you're, you'll start to realize there are stuff that needs to be done all the time if I just stay within earshot, if I just listen to what's going on and I get with the flow of the job of the day, I'll find out I can be very much a contributing factor to the things that need to get done just by sitting close by and listening. Number six, go to work to eat. Just get over to that craft service table and make sure that you get as much food as you possibly can. Or perhaps you should just grab something quickly at the craft service table and get back to the work that you need to do. Number seven, as soon as you get to set or on that wedding, you want to create as much of a connection as you possibly can with the client. You're there to be able to establish a relationship with the client. Or perhaps you should allow yourself to do the work you're supposed to do and not create a connection with the client. No one hires an assistant because they want them to create a personal relationship and to start trading cards with the client on set. That's considered a really bad breach of etiquette when you do that kind of thing. Number eight, don't clean up after yourself. Leave a mess everywhere you go. When you do a job, just leave it half done at the end and have pretty much a mess that someone else has got to clean up. Because everyone knows that you were hired because your employer wants to clean up after you. No. You're supposed to be there to make the day go easier, not create a mess and a wake behind you that someone else has to clean up. So tell us your story when you got fired because of something you did on set or when you fired somebody who was on set. Share your stories on people who don't quite understand the etiquette of being on set. It'll help everyone to learn and know the things that they can do to be better when they're on set. So subscribe to Slanted Lands, get over to our Facebook group. We want you on our Facebook group. Please join us there and keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking.
Trick or treat, smell my feet. Give me something I can't eat. SKB cases, you can't eat them, but you can put all your cool stuff in them. Get over to thuslandandlings.com. You can sign up to win one of these today. We have three of them. So 10 ways to not subscribe to Slant Lens. I mean, if you really don't want your work to be better and you think that your photography is absolutely amazing and you have nothing to learn whatsoever, and your girlfriend has your camera, and besides your mother-in-law doesn't like photography, and uh, your grandma said that photographers were people who don't make any money. I mean, those are only five of the 10 reasons why you shouldn't subscribe to Slant Lens. And I'm sure there's others you can come up with. So, but if you can't come up with any more, maybe you should just subscribe.